Hello. This is my second video on how to build a solar projector. This is going to be more of a deluxe model. Uh, the first one was uh, the first video was shown uh, in the spirit of how I made it when I first uh, built my solar projector. Uh, you know, it was well materials I had at hand uh, using duct tape. You know, something like really cheap and quick that you can do. Uh, this is more if you have a little bit more time, some more money. Uh, you're kind of using the same concept, but but spending a little bit money on some of the other parts. All right, so I'm going to go into the difference uh, with that. Uh, the first video really has more detail how to build it, so I just kind of kind of go over the, the differences and go over the overview kind of quickly on this. I uh, just kind of save time for this part of the video. Okay, so the first thing that I that I changed that I invested in was buying a sawhorse from Home Depot that I modified uh, to hold my scope. So you can see the difference. This is the one that I built out of wood, you know, it's like using a 4x4 four four and rubber ply with a hat. And then, uh, and this is different. Now what's good about this is that the lathe can actually fold up, right? So it makes it a bit more portable, a little bit lighter as well. Uh, and there's also uh, a bigger difference that's actually more important, is that because of how I have this uh, spinning by having uh, uh, bolts this way, uh, in order to keep this together, I have to put uh, these brackets here, right? However, the bottom of the scope won't be able to reach full upright position, right? It won't be able to hit the aspirin. It's going to hit these bars that's holding it. Uh, which is okay any other time of day except noon, right? Uh, but here, as you can see, you have total freedom of movement along the bottom. Anyway, so I took apart my old projector. I know, it's kind of sad, but it moved on, all right? It went to a better life. But anyway, it's kind of want to show, uh, you know, this part of it, right, that holds, it's like the yoke that holds the, 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 uh, the projector screen and also it's attached to the downspout. And also it has the rod that secures it to your base. Right, so basically you have this can turn on this axis, Put this on so you can have this kind of movement, right? Anyway, this is kind of a cheap, easy way to have this type of mount. All right, so I'm going to put it together and we go to the next part uh, and show you the, the other differences. All right, okay, so this is my uh, new and improved solar projector uh, set up. Uh, as you can see, it's a little bit bigger than the other one. Actually, what I did is I increased the size of this from 10 inches to 12 inches. Okay, so that let me have more room inside to either have a bigger image or more importantly to have enough room around the image for wiggle room, right? Because the sun's apparent motion is pretty quick when you amplify it. So you want to have room so you're not always like trying to keep it around the center of a tube, right? Uh, so anyway, so I went up to a 12 inch tube on this and I just went ahead and put a label on it, you know, put a back to it and I reinforced the back and also in here, I put more of a liner, this wood liner, just to protect the rim. And I'm gonna take the camera and go closer to show the, the differences. But you can see the whole setup here. Okay, I also wanna go over this part here, right? Which is the, uh, uh, it's important to have this tripod. And the, the thing is, is that you wanna, if you, you can have the sun set just right, so it buys you some time to take pictures or kind of walk around a little bit, you know, take a look at it. So you don't always have to hold it, right? Because it's very jittery if you try to hold it. So it helps to have a tripod. Now also, as the sun gets higher, okay, there's a potential for this to kind of tip over. And actually this happened to me, so it's, that's how I figured this out not to do this, right? Um, so what I did was I created a little a, a band over here, right, very flexible, but just enough to keep it attached to the tripod so it doesn't tip over in its own weight, okay, because it's a little bit top heavy when it gets in an upright position. Uh, other than that, uh, the inside of the solar tube, of the, of the tube, is, is lined with uh, flocking paper, which is what they use for lining uh, telescopes, all right? Okay, so I'm going to go for some close-ups and go into more detail. All right, so here's the inside of the uh, solar projector. You can see we have the image of the sun nice sunny day and boom and uh, you know unfortunately uh, there are no sunspots on the sun right now uh, last week there were quite a few and I was hoping that there would be some today 
However, when they are, you can really clear, clearly see them. The inside of the tube is lined with flocking paper. See how dark it is? It makes it, it just gives it more of a shadow uh, and it captures any kind of ambient light. All right, so that's the setup there. Okay, and up here, okay, instead of binoculars, I have a monocular. Okay, that's just a, a one-eyed binocular, right? Uh, however, I, I didn't realize that when I bought this one, it came with a different with a type of rail system they use uh, to interchange uh, scopes and weapons called a, a Picatinny rail. I kind of show you what that is here, <laughs> right? So, anyways, attached to the monocular, and then it's a, a carrier, right? All you have to do is just unscrew it; the whole thing comes out. So it makes it a lot easier to use to reuse your your scope for other purposes. Uh, instead of having duct tape around it, right? Okay, and the shield is just made of uh, a foam paper, okay, which I painted. Uh, this is the L bracket that I got at Home Depot, and again, this is all Home Depot parts, uh, downspout. This is a concrete forming tube. Uh, this is a Home Depot saw horse that I re <laughs> repurposed. Uh, the tripod, of course, is whatever you can get your hands on. So really, so in terms of the materials, this is a little bit more expensive in terms of the flocking paper. I think it's like $40. To get that, okay, right there, uh, and the sawhorse was another forty dollars. You know, so this is a little bit more than the thirty dollar uh, minimum that I had on the other projector. However, I think it makes it a little bit nicer and also easier to transport. There you go. All right, well, thanks for uh, checking out my video on this and how to do this. Uh, if you build one, please let me know. Send me an email. Uh, you know, send me pictures. I'd love to see it or if you have improvements on it. Like I said, this is like an idea of how to do it, you know, using cheaper materials, all right? Whatever's at hand. Anyway, but that idea is to project the sun safely, right? And with this method, you can look at the light of the sun without using any filters, right? Uh, and then when, I'm gonna take this down to the waterfront park here in Portland, Oregon. And right now there's a blues festival going on, so there should be a lot of people. So I'm just gonna go ahead and set this up in the, the most prominent place possible and see uh, what people think of it, all right? And then I'm gonna put it in the, in the video. Uh, but anyway, but just to put uh, my plug for this, uh, because what we're doing with this is actually uh, doing a daytime astronomy, right? Because that's a star, the sun's a star. And this is a way to look at it without filters, right? If you put your eye in the direct path of the sun, you have to, you know, use welding goggles, right? You have to protect your eyes from all the radiation. But you also lose detail. I mean, you won't ever see a sunspot with goggles on. However, with this system, you're looking at the natural light of the sun and you can distinctly see sunspots. Uh, and this is also good for uh, observing transits, planetary transits. Uh, this is the one I built in 2012 was because of the Venus transit. And I was able to see it really clear with this, uh, without any filters. Uh, like this Mercury transit, though they pass and it's going to be a while before they come again. However, even more common are transits from satellites and, and a bigger, uh, like the space station. So this is, you can find the coordinates. You plug in your earthly coordinates, and depending on the day of the sun, if there's a satellite or something big enough to, to view as a transit, it can calculate your time to see it. All right? So that might be fun to do with a scope. It's trying to get like the International Space Station as a right transit between you and the sun. Again, nothing you can never ever see by looking at the sun or using goggles. Uh, anyway, with this, this is a, a good way to, uh, to be the sun. And also, it's, it's cheap enough. And I think it'd be a great school project, you know, for, for a science class uh, to just whip it out, you know, on a sunny day and look at the sun, especially when the sun's about to turn. Okay, because it's, I think people have this idea that the sun's like totally featureless sunspots with this. Anyway, so have fun with it. I'm, I'm having fun uh, using it. And uh, actually, I have ideas for another model and I'm going to make a video for that. Alright, thank you. Well, I got a solar project I built, home built, using the urban outdoors, and it's got some of these downspouts, and it's got some of these solar homes, right? And 
if you look, that's a piece of it. Well, that man. 